All right, I was scrolling through my, uh, my I guess it was Twitter or X feed, and I, I, I was sort of perplexed. I saw this interview with uh, apparently Henry Kissinger, who uh, apparently now is 100 years old. And what would shock me was how obese he was. I was just like, I'm not used to seeing 100-year-old people that reach that age with, with the level of obesity he had. He almost looked like a cartoon character. And, uh, you know, you think about, um, you know, I, 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 all the comments about adrenochrome and all that, you know, I mean, I, I disregard all that stuff. But I mean, obviously he has access to health care that many, or health, health interventions that maybe, maybe the average person doesn't, you know, super wealthy people tend to have advantages in that regard. But it's just so unusual to see, you know, you look at, you, every time you see, you know, grandma lives to 112, you know, world's oldest person or whatever, oldest person in Europe, they're always thin. They're almost always uh, not obese. I mean, they may not be, you know, uh, cachectic, but they're never obese. You know, I've never seen that before. And so it's just interesting to see that. And so a certain percentage of people with obesity will make it to an older age. It's, it's again, the exception rather than the rule. And I think that, uh, you know, I'm, I don't know what his quality of life looks like. You look at his hand, he's got bandages, and probably his skin is breaking down. That's pretty common. You see in older folks where their skin is so thin that it just breaks down. And so, again, it goes into this concept of how old can humans live? Now, I mean, we've got outlier examples where people live into the one teens occasionally when one person supposedly made it to 122, all that, that, that gal from uh, France, uh, I think her name is Calame, or was her last name, that, that's been contested as to if she was actually that age and maybe it was fraudulent. But anyway, we know there's been probably people living 115 plus. Uh, and, but even throughout history, and this is, a, this is the misconception many people have, they hear about life expectancy in the, you know, in the 19th century, the 18th century was you know, 40 years of age or 45 or something like that. And that, again, and even, even I hear this all the time, well, prehistoric man only lived to 30. Those, again, those life expectancies at birth uh, take into the fact that there's high infant mortality rates. There's, there's early deaths due to trauma. Uh, you know, one in one, almost every other child was dying in childbirth or something like that. A lot of the women were dying in childbirth. And so those facts alone dramatically drop your overall population life expectancy at birth. But if you get out to 10 years of age, um, then the likelihood of you meet, reaching 50, 60, 70, 80 is, is much higher. And we do have examples, uh, you know, historically, you know, people like uh, da Vinci and some of the Greek philosophers were, 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 were known to have died in their 80s. Uh, there is evidence of prehistoric man where they think people have reached their sixth, seventh, and perhaps even eighth decade. And so, um, you know, it's just, but what, what is the limit? You know, what is the limit to life expectancy? This is another thing I uh, don't really... It's not that I don't care, but I don't really care that much about talking about how long someone's going to live. You know, what I'm doing now, health-wise, is it going to make me live longer? Um, I think as physicians, and this is a concept that I've I've talked about before, are we just kicking it down the kicking the can down the road when we're saying, well, we're going to do this to prevent heart disease, you know, 20 years from now, uh, and, and, and in in lieu of actually addressing why the person in front of you is actually sick? And I think that, in my view, you know, that's my philosophical, uh, I guess, belief system when it comes to how you should treat patients. You should take people that are sick and suffering today and stop it or do the best you can to stop it rather than like, oh, sort of not really do a very good job of that in, in effort to pretend you're going to make them live longer. When in reality is we have no idea. Anybody that tells you do this, this, and this, and you'll live a long, healthy life, yeah, you know, it's probably not. I mean, what I will agree is if you can do things that, that probably uh, get rid of your diseases, obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, on and on, then you probably will, will probably have a longer life. Can't say that with, a, with any definitive sense, but I think it's a, probably a reasonable assumption. But anyway, Kissinger, golly, he, I, 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 was, I was surprised he was still alive, you know, and uh, it's, it's interesting to see that. Why don't you guys think about that? Uh, I mean, I, does this surprise you that one, he's alive, and two, that he's alive in that such a kind of rotund state? Anyway, let me know what you guys think, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.